Hello everyone and welcome to another update on reality modelling at Bentley Systems. My name is Phil Christensen and today I'm going to talk to you about ways that you can share your reality model with others. We're going to talk about context share. It lets you share with your colleagues, with your teammates, with other members of your project or even with people and organisations outside of your own company or your organisation. Let's uh, take a look now at the context in which we are doing the sharing. If we look at how context capture is used around the world, uh, all kinds of companies are using it to turn photos and laser scans into 3D meshes for infrastructure and other purposes. And because of the size and distribution of all these projects, the need to share those reality models is growing every day. And that's the reason that we've introduced Context Share to make that sharing easier than ever. Before we get into the details of Context Share, let's just do a quick recap on the Context Capture workflow. The starting point is capturing photos or laser scans from a drone, from a plane, or indeed from the ground. The next step is processing. You can either do your processing using our new cloud processing service or you can do the processing on the desktop or using Context Capture Center, which is a local compute center. From there, you may want to do some editing, a little bit of tidying up of the mesh, and then you're ready to start sharing. If you've used the cloud service, then the output of the cloud processing automatically gets placed in the Context Share Cloud repository. And if you're using the desktop or Context Capture Center, then you can upload your resulting reality meshes and, and any of the other data and store that in Context Share. Once the data is in Context Share, then you're ready to start sharing. Also a reminder that there are a number of other ways that you can share and augment reality data. We'll cover them in future episodes. The first one, Context Capture has a link to Open Cities Planner, our new tool for city scale uh, visualization of re reality data and lots of other data types for a digital city. And iTwin Services and iTwin Design Review let you combine together a review of your BIM model with the reality model for the context that that BIM model is placed in. And now let's uh, jump straight into context share and briefly describe exactly what it is. It's part of our connected data environment. That means it's a wider type amongst others for your entire project or infrastructure asset. And it includes a web viewer that lets you stream reality models in a secure way across teams and across organizations. And it's not just being able to view your reality model in the web browser. It also includes some sophisticated data compression and streaming capability so that you can send reality models directly from Context Share to your desktop applications. So if you're using MicroStation or OpenRoads or OpenPlant, for example, you can stream reality model directly to those desktop applications. Let's take a look at Context Share in action. If I go to my web browser, the starting point is connect.bentley.com, the launchpad for all of our cloud services. And if I just scroll down, we'll find the ProjectWise Context Share icon. Uh, we can click on that and launch Context Share. The home page shows a list of all of the available reality models and the projects they be belong to. And uh, this will quickly grow over time. So we provide a range of different to quickly filtering and sorting by resolution or by owner or date and what have you. Of course, uh, if we have quite a lot of data, we want to be able to find data that we're interested in. So we have a partnership with Siemens. I'm going to search across a couple of thousand projects here and find the ones that are related to Siemens and select the one that I'm interested in. Let's have a quick look at the properties of the substation project. We can see who created it and when and its key characteristics. And importantly, when we edit it, we can also control access uh, criteria. So this secure system lets you define the permissions as being public, private or restricted to within your organization. You're going to be sharing, so you're going to have a lot of different people using the system and perhaps even different people from different organizations. So you want to keep track of their usage. How much are they using it? How much uh, data are they using and what's their access characteristics? And so we provide a dashboard. So for any given date range, you can see what's happening with the data that you're sharing. OK, once you have a particular model, now we can launch the web browser and start to view a reality model in the browser. 
Now, of course, like all 3D viewers, we have all the standard viewing controls, so we can do our rotation, our pan, we can zoom in and out, let's wheel, and obviously do um, different zooming by uh, regions of interest, for example. And uh, we can do a lot more than that, of course. Uh, we're not just um, viewing this model. You can see the performance is very fast. This works for even really large models. And uh, we have high fidelity mesh underneath this. So we can use things like the measurement tool to identify the location of any point or to perform measurements. So I might like to know how high this garage door is so I can quickly measure it and get a distance from that. As well as the viewing tools, we also have the ability to add annotations to our model. And we can do those in a couple of different ways. If there's just a particular point of interest, then uh, we can add an annotation on a point. So I can go to my brand new annotation tool and click on an access hatchway, for example, and uh, that will create an annotation. Uh, and I can put in uh, my note here. I'm just going to say that this is a manhole. It's unused and uh, I want to remove it and I click save and it saves it to my registry. But we can also create more sophisticated annotations that are linked to parts of the model. So here we can uh, select a region of the model. So I just do a rough sketch around on the ground around my model here and uh, close it off and then enclose the part of the model that I'm interested in and then it will automatically calculate the boundary for me and then get a selectable part of the mesh. This is a gas bottle storage area so I'm going to label it as such and it's uh, unfenced at the moment. I'm doing a kind of a virtual inspection here uh, so I'm providing some advice to someone else, someone else about what action they should take and I can save that. Once we have our list of annotations, then we have some shortcuts here. So uh, as I um, turn this off, then I can go to a particular uh, annotation here and I can automatically zoom to its location or I can zoom to the location of the gas bottles. It's very handy if someone else comes in and there's a lot of annotations. Or I can actually select a selected object and automatically pull up its properties here. This is a shared environment so I can contribute to it. And so there's a little bit of background around context share. There's lots more to it I've shown you so far. Uh, let's just briefly recap that uh, context share is a new cloud service. It's part of our connected data environment and has a web viewer to securely manage share and stream your reality models. You can use it on a phone, you can use it in a web browser, you can use it on a tablet, and you can use it on your desktop, and you can use it with your existing design desktop applications. If you want to get started about learning about sharing reality models and uh, using it yourself in the browser, you can click on the link below in this URL and uh, let's try it out for yourself. That's sharing reality models. Thanks for watching.